Students, now we are coming to a very important topic that is oral cancer and the malignant lesions we have. First condition we start definitely is leukoplakia. That is the most important pre-malignant condition that we know. Leukoplakia, if you look at the picture here, you can see in the oral mucosa, you can see on the postrolateral border of the tongue and it appears like a white patch that does not rub off. So clinically, differential diagnosis can include just the hyperkeratosis, dysplasia or even squamous cell carcinoma. All the white lesions should go biopsy. Depending upon the size of the lesion, less than 1 cm, it should go for the excisional biopsy and more than 1 cm lesion, they go for incisional biopsy when you take out a piece of the lesion. Majority of the cases are actually only hyperkeratosis, but you'll get to know the final diagnosis only after doing the biopsy. Now, if you look at the erythroplakia here, these are the red lesions, red patch. That also just like leukoplakia does not rub off. Differential diagnosis, again, you can have it like a dysplasia or it could be squamous cell carcinoma. And as I told you that as compared to white lesions, the red lesion of erythroplakia is considered to be very aggressive, high chance of turning into malignancy. Here, the two-week rule of waiting is not applied. The same day patient is diagnosed with erythroplakia, you have to send him to the old pathologist for doing biopsy. But for all the lesions, ulcers, white patches, you always wait for two weeks before you send the patient for oral pathologist because you want to treat the condition in the meantime just to see that if it get cured by your treatment like giving the steroid rinses or giving the antifungal mouth rinse, you want to eliminate other conditions too. You can see the erythroplakia. This erythroleukoplakia too where you have both red and white lesions combined. Now look at this. This is acne colitis. The acne colitis students is also called as the, the acne colitis student is also called as solar keratosis. And it is a pre-malignant condition also called as the farmer slip. When you have long-term exposure to the ultraviolet radiations of the light, prolonged exposure to sunlight, that can lead to acne colitis. It's a pre-malignant condition. You see it mainly in the vermilion border of the lower lip, you can see. And if it, this condition is not treated, you have to do the lip shave here. You have to remove this vermilion border which is having the lesion. It can turn to oral cancer, the lip cancer if it is not treated on time. Now we come to squamous cell carcinoma. We know this is the most common intraoral cancer that we have, the cancer of the squamous lining of the oral mucosa. The real cause of cancer definitely student is still unknown. But we know some risk factor. Smoking and alcohol are considered to be number one risk factor for developing the oral cancer along with HPV, genetic are the other factors. The most common location if they ask you in the exam of the oral cancer is lower lip but interorally the most common location will be on the tongue the postrolateral border of the tongue it is never found on dorsum of the tongue the lesion of squamous cell carcinoma can just start like a oral ulcer which remain unhealed for a long period of time red or white patch or mass it can develop once it get ulcerated it can be painful for the patient as well so if you look at the con so if the single ulcer student doesn't show sign of healing 14 days after the putative cause is removed, it should be considered malignant, right? You have to send the patient for biopsy until proven otherwise. If you look at the picture here, these are some of the lesions of squamous cell carcinoma. You can see the red lesion here. You can see the white lesion here on the postulatal border of the tongue. You can see a big ulcerated growth that is also a sign of oral cancer in the advanced stages. Now let us talk about the verrucous carcinoma. Verrucous carcinoma student is a low grade of squamous cell carcinoma. It usually doesn't metastasize. So metastasis is the most important feature of malignancy. Verrucous carcinoma, basal cell carcinoma, they usually don't metastasize. So they are having a low grade, a low tendency to metastasize. So chances of turning cancer is very low. And verrucous carcinoma student is also called as the snuff dipper cancer. So patients who do snuff dipping, they make a pouch of tobacco and do the snuff dipping. You can see the features more in the vestibule area, the lesion more in the vestibule area. You will see a cauliflower, verrucous is a cauliflower like growth, slowly growing with white, rough, warty surface. Now let us talk about the basal cell carcinoma. Basal cell carcinoma students is also called as a rodent's ulcer and it is one of the most common cancer that we have. 
Intraorally, it is not found, but you can see it on the middle third of the face. You can see, look like a rat ulcer, and it doesn't not metastasize. Painless ulcer again usually in blonde people, excessive sun exposure, it is common. With raised roll border with central area of depression and ulceration, so it does not metastasize. That is good. It has a better prognosis, but it will only do the local destruction. These are the point of basal cell carcinoma. Which seen above the lip and tragus line, chronic sun exposure. Why squamous cell is seen below the lip and the tragus line. Acute sun damage or sunburn is one of the risk factor for squamous cell. While chronic sun exposure will lead to basal cell carcinoma. And intraorally, it's the most common cancer of the squamous cell. While the basal cell is not found intraorally. Now, student, let us talk about the inflammatory bone lesions that we have. So, number one. We have is alveolar osteitis that is also called as a dry socket condition. This dry socket condition you can see mostly in the mandibular third molar extraction. After doing the extraction, if the patient does not follow your post-operative instructions properly, you ask him not to spit, not to smoke, not to drink with a straw, not to rinse mouth, not to smoke, and he did all of these. That can lead to this alveolar osteitis. What happens in dry socket condition? The clot it get dislodged. And the socket look very painful and you see a necrotic tissue, patient can have bad breath. Important is when the patient comes to you, you do the irrigation properly with the warm saline. Don't do any curettage and it does not require any antibiotics. It's not an infection, just the inflammation of the socket. Give a Zoe sedative dressing to the patient, analgesic and home irrigation. It usually take around 10 days for the socket to heal completely. Let us see the next condition student that's called as condensing osteitis. Condensing osteitis can be seen in the non-vital tooth where you see area of rarifying osteitis, a radiolucent area that is surrounded by a radio-opaque border and this area is not attached to the root. You can see widening of the PDL as well. If you look at the picture, you can see widening of the PDL. Okay student, now we are coming to another important condition called as chronic osteomyelitis. So different varieties of osteomyelitis. We have the acute variety, the chronic variety. Chronic can be sclerizing osteomyelitis. You can have Gary's osteomyelitis, so different types. Long-standing acute osteomyelitis can turn to chronic and osteomyelitis you mainly have the inflammation of the bone marrow and the main bacteria causing the infection is definitely staphylococcus here. In chronic condition, you see diffuse large area of the bone involvement, which is not localized. And very important feature of the osteomyelitis, especially chronic, is the sequestrum and involucrum. Sequestrum is a necrosed bone and involucrum is a new bone that is surrounding the dead bone or sequestrum. Because what is happening due to infection, there is a decreased blood supply to the bone. And that's the reason you will see necrotic bone fragment that will look radiolucent on the radiograph. Is usually seen in mandible because mandible has a poorer blood supply than the maxilla. Patchy ill-defined radiolucency and in osteomyelitis you will see a moth-eaten appearance. So if you look at the picture closely, you will see it looks like bone is eaten here and there, right? That is the moth-eaten appearance that you have. And the next one we have is osteomyelitis with proliferative periostitis. This is student what is called as Gares, G A R R E, Gares osteomyelitis. Here, what's happening? The inflammation is spreading to the periosteum, and the periosteum is lifted and deposits the bone. Young people having the Gares, mostly in the mandible. Very important, you will see here in the picture if you look closely, this is called as the onion skin appearance. Onion skin appearance, very, very important. Let us ask in the exam, and you can see the lifting of the periosteum here. 